Oh, if there's one reason I love showing up to work, it's because of pets. And the other reason is for pets who are loved by their caretakers, moms, dads, whatever it is that you'd like to call them. I'll tell you what, how about if we call you Judy Moraz, volunteer for Hospice of the Valley with Bravo, and uh, you know, it looks like Mini Lassie. Is that the breed? It, it, because I didn't know that collies came this small. Well, he shrunk. Uh, <laughs> As did I. <laughs> no, he's a Shetland sheepdog, and they're miniature collies. But they're this is the size they are. And boy, what a beautiful dog. And what a good-looking Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> Beth Ivins, another volunteer with Riley. And tell me. Tell me about Riley other than the Irish origin. <laughs> so Riley is a mini Rex, uh, which Rex are the uh, softest breed of rabbit. A mini Rex. A mini Rex. So the, the Rex breed normally larger than I'm assuming yes. because this is a mini? Yes. He's a pretty good size he Riley. He is, he is. But they the Rex have the softest breed of fur, so they're nicknamed the Velveteen Rabbits. Talk to us about how you are associated with Hospice of the Valley, one of the most respected organizations anywhere. It is. Hospice uh, has been a, a real integral part in my life, um, especially when dealing with death with my in-laws and my father recently. Mm. But uh, working with pet therapy uh, for them with the patients has been just an amazing experience to be able to spend time with patients because it's a difficult time and sometimes they need that little bit of uh, therapy for themselves being the caretakers or even the staff that's taking care with the patients and the patients themselves to kind of break up their time while they're there too. Well we have a therapy dog so I do have some understanding <laughs> of what it means to have one in our family mm -hmm. but did you choose the bunny? I did. I actually had another rabbit that I would started with, uh, with hospice, and having the rabbits there because being able to put them in hospital beds and they just stay still, and, and I think because it is something that is a little different than a dog or a cat, uh, that it makes it a little more unique uh, for patients. And it's made and life a little easier for you. Absolutely. <laughs> what about you, Judy? Tell us your story. Well, you and Bravo and Hospice of the Valley. Well, I knew that Hospice was an extraordinary organization. Um, I had seen the service it provided and also knew that dogs have, have a quality of healing and of connectedness with people in pain. And so it's when I retired and when I got Bravo, it was just time to do, to do this calling. And it's amazing to watch patients, some who don't as a rule because of dementia speak or don't respond, suddenly connect, suddenly come to a level of, of I think, Peace. But what um, kind of training did you have for this? Well, we you go through tests, but but I think the important thing to tell your audience is that if you have a calm dog that really is easy to sort of manage in in new places, mm -hmm. and you have this sense of. of purpose, then you should go through the, the training. There are three tests, and then you're certified, and then you go through hospice training, and you're ready to be a team. And there's 70 teams um, all over the valley, a pony, a, a cat, dogs, rabbit, um, that, that serve in patients' homes, in retirement homes, you know, and and it's really, it is magic. Beth, before we have to say goodbye to all four of you, <laughs> uh, please tell our audience how they can get involved. I think by uh, anyone that wanted to do a pet therapy, um, be a pet therapy team, you would contact Hospice of the Valley and uh, they would be able to get you in contact with Pet Connections, uh, which is where they do all of the training with Hospice. Hospice of the Valley, uh, not for profit, for fuzzy animals. <laughs> <laughs> this is Patrick Mann.